me ask you this. Would you ever write a love letter to try and land the home of your dreams? Well, more people are doing it, particularly in Silicon Valley, where sellers have the market under their control. Let's talk right now to Joanne Lublin. She's been writing about this and reading some of these letters. Joanne, this was a strategy used by people in sort of the boom times of the real estate market. Right. It's now coming back in a lot of sectors like Silicon Valley. Why is that? Well, there, it's coming back simply because these markets, uh, certain markets are really hot at the moment. And they're so hot that you're seeing bidding wars break out again, where people have to offer to pay more than the asking price. And then you need something extra to kind of push you over the top when you've got five, six, seven, and in one case, you know, 12 bids above a, uh, an asking price. Now tell us about this couple who landed their $1.13 million dream home in Saratoga, California. What was their strategy? Well, in their case, they had already tried this gambit of doing a pitch letter twice before, and it hadn't worked. They had, uh, had lost their, their, their bid. And so when they found the home of their dreams, they really put more of themselves into the letter. They wrote a two-page letter. They talked in the letter about how they could see themselves being in this house once they had a baby. This is a recently married couple. They included photos from their wedding. They went on for two pages. And it, and it kind of resonated. Uh, but on the other hand, they also had the best bid. They, they also had the best bid. Did you find anyone who did not have the best bid whose letter pushed them over the top? Yes. And in fact, another example in the story, they were in a bidding contest in which there were 11 other bidders right. bidding more than the asking price. And their bid was accepted even though it wasn't the highest of the highest. Because, again, the seller could relate to what they talked about in their letter. They were a high-tech couple. The seller was a high-tech couple. They are expecting their first child. The seller has a toddler. And so he had something in common with them. Now, I know a lot of people, a lot of sellers want to hear that you're never going to touch or tear down the home that is so important to them, particularly if it's a home that was in a family for a long time. Do you find a lot of couples making those kinds of promises, those we will leave it as is if you just pick us promises in their letters? Well, actually, in my little do's and don'ts, in, as a sidebar to the story, I say do not make any specific promises about what it is you plan to do, because it could be a turnoff if you say, you know, we really liked your uh, master bedroom, but we're going to uh, d double in size. And by the same token, you can't promise to never tear down a house. You don't know what you're going to do once you live there. But there was this one example I cited in the story where the bidder uh, won the contest because she sent a letter signed with a paw print from her dog. And the seller was afraid that the buyer would tear down the house. It was an older, very small home. And the letter said, you know, I can see myself playing in the yard and my owner wants to live in your house. Right after the deal closed, as soon as they finished the sale, the buyer went out and tore down the house Ouch. and built a much bigger one, just what the seller had feared. I guess that letter's not legally binding, right? No, these are just love letters. These are not contracts. All right. Well, all is fair in love, war, and real estate. Joanne Lublin, <laughs> thanks, thanks so much for being with us. You're welcome.